the Cartoon Museum today to interview and draw the drummer and comedian Roland Rivron. Roland. Yes. How are you? All right, I'm really <laughs> quite busy. Oh, nice to see you, yeah. And you, hello. Very, very good. Hi. So, Roland, I believe you, you started your... <laughs> that's, oh, that's a shame I was going to put that on eBay. No. Right. Not right. So I'm not happy with it. Not happy with it. I think the first time I came across you was uh, through Raw Sex. Right. Of course, that was the name of your band as well. Yes. On, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was uh, it. On French and Saunders, wasn't it? French and Saunders, yeah. First half, we go off. And then when we come on after the, uh, after the interval, Simon, be wearing a massive great big neck brace. <laughs> and don't, we won't say anything. I went and got a neck brace mm. from the Royal Free Hospital. This woman sort of showed me down into the bowels of this hospital and these, all these metal cabinets and she opened up various metal cabinets and all these things that were obviously off dead people yeah. all fell out. And she said, what about that one? I, I've got this for Simon. I said, Simon, look, I've got your neck brace for the show. He said, oh, great, brilliant. And I waited for him to put it on and he put it on and he said, Oh, Roly, actually, that fits quite well. I said, yeah, it's off a dead man. <laughs> <laughs> I was told one time at the Groucho Club that you rode a bicycle down the stairs. A lot of, a lot of the, the waiters cycle in to work, and for a laugh, they used to start in the brasserie, and they used to see if they could cycle on their bikes all the way around the brasserie, through the bar, and down into reception. You know, and I said, well, well, I was there watching this, so this is all right, this is all right. Yeah, but you're on mountain bikes. Come on, you're on mountain bikes. Let's start upstairs. I, you know, poof, chick, ching, boom. So I came out, came down the stairs, hadn't rehearsed it, hadn't sort of looked at what I was doing. So I went flying in through the air. The bar stools all along the bar broke a lot of the, the momentum. And, and the, I got first degree, I like to call them, carpet burns all down one side of my face. Let me take you back to 1994, the World Cup, where Diana Ross missed a penalty at the opening ceremony. I believe you helped her out with that a bit later. She was on a junket, so we turned up. We said, Diana, look, um, we've listened to the album. There's not really that much to talk about. No. You know, when, when the piece goes out on the radio, obviously we'll play a track, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll name check it. But above and beyond that, we're not really interested in the album. Do you mind? And she said, oh, guys, no, this is great. This is a breath of fresh air. What do you want to do? And we said, we've bought a football. She was in a massive, great big Louis XV suite in the Ritz. So we pushed some of this antique furniture to the side, set the goal up and, and put the ball down. We had a <laughs> whistle and she kicked it and she, and she punted it. She's got a Jimmy shoes on or whatever they're called and it was all going wrong. And uh, by the time we left, she was swerving it, she was curving it like Beckham, it was great. And as we left, you know, just the parting thing. We said, thank you very much, Diana. That was lovely. Thank you very much. And the last thing we heard her say was, you will mention the album, won't you? And you never did. No, we didn't. No. Hang uh, on, hang on. Yeah, hang on. Might... You know what? Can you hear that?